All right, this stuff has had a chance to cool down. Um, I've got my ridiculously large Buckner funnel out on top of my uh, sidearm flask here. We're going to vacuum filter this stuff, and I'm using the large funnel because I would not be in the least bit surprised if the sludge in here clogs the filter real quick and the filtration goes slow. Um, one thing I did not show, I did a stannous chloride test on the liquid in here and really it's kind of inconclusive. Maybe the slightest trace of greenishness but certainly it's it's not a, a serious positive for palladium or anything. I mean the liquid itself is kind of blue-green so you know not a strong indication of anything in the liquid as it is you know and this is this is a learning experience this whole thing so next time I won't bother with the nitric acid bath because it doesn't seem to have done much next time we might go straight to uh, aqua regia these have been a waste of time and chemicals so let me get this filtered I'll try and get the liquid through first before I get too much of that nasty solids in there and plug up the filter. Otherwise, this could take all afternoon. Don't want that. So we got a nice clean filtrate coming through. Okay. Let's see if I can get this sludge in here now. This is actually going remarkably quickly. All right, good. I'll take it. I was afraid this would take a while. I have done some filtrations that have taken hours. Boy, this stuff does not want to move out of this speaker. Very happy to stay in the beaker. There we go. Got about all of it now. Sort of bathtub ring around the bottom of the beaker, though, where the top of the liquid was. Yeah, I'm shocked at how fast this is filtering. Let me uh, get it with a little bit of. Uh, Distilled water here while wow, I'm blowing sludge all over the inside of the funnel. I really want to do that. I just want to help get the blue liquid through and leave the sludge behind. Boy, that stuff looks like it's got a lot of copper in it, but it sure did not react to the nitric acid. So there must be something besides copper there that looks like copper. I guess some of it could be gold, if I'm not being a little over-optimistic. Yellow gold plus brown sludge might equal copper color, I don't know. Okay, so I'll just let the vacuum pull, you know, some of this blue liquid through. Then we'll have our uh, slimes in the filter here. And I will pull it out, put it back, I guess, in this beaker, since it's got a little bit of residue in it that needs to be dissolved. And we will uh, put some aqua regia on it and see what happens. Okay, I've let the vacuum run for a few minutes. This is looking pretty dry. It's starting to crack. That tells me that the powder is pretty dry in there. Okay, so... Pull this out and put it right down in here. And I always use two layers of filtration because the holes in my Buckner funnel are so big that they will tend to uh, blow holes through a, a regular one one layer of filter. So I got two layers of filter in here. I'll just use this second filter to uh, collect the slimes that were got up on the edge, and we'll throw that in there. All right, so next step for this stuff is treatment with aqua regia. Now this stuff here 
a lot of nitric acid went into this liquid, and I have a feeling it's still there. I don't think it got used up. So I may set this stuff aside and use it uh, the next time I dissolve IC chips. And uh, it probably still get some more use out of that nitric acid there rather than throw it away. All right, time for aqua regia. And I, you know what? But first, I might be wrong about this stuff. The nitric acid might have been used up in it. I just did a quick and dirty test to see if that was still highly acidic. I put some on a piece of limestone and I did not get any reaction. So I need to dig out my uh, pH test equipment and see what pH that really is. The nitric acid I put in there might have actually gotten used up. I don't know. The bulk of it anyway. Even though there was really no visible reaction the whole time. There was no foaming. There was no fuming. Very weird. I guess I need to do a better test on that and see if there's really any nitric acid left in it or not. Okay, let me get the fume hood going. We'll make some aqua regia. See what we can get out of this stuff. So I might as well just. Uh, there's a fair amount of paper pulp there. I guess I might as well use all the rest of this. I've got more. Lit it up. Let's put some heat to it. Medium heat, like I like to use. So I don't know if there's any nitric acid left in that stuff or not. So, about two milliliters. to eight and we'll leave it and see what happens. Something in that sludge might have used up all the nitric acid and been very quiet about it. I don't know. So while that's warming up I'm gonna get my pH test papers out and check that other liquid and see. Okay, this is darn confusing. We're at about four tops pH on this liquid here. Even after I put a lot of nitric acid in it. I mean, it's turning pink down here from my fingers from making the aqua regia just now. I mean, that's, it's getting more acid off my fingers than coming out of this stuff. So something in there did chew up the, all the nitric acid I put in there. It did it quietly, without fanfare, without uh, bubbling, boiling, fizzing, fuming. So I don't know what went on. Maybe the nitric acid bath was necessary? I hope I gave it enough of a nitric acid bath. I guess we'll find out. Alright, it's been a little while. Stuff's heating up. Starting to see some reaction going on. Got some bubbling, got some brown fumes forming. All right, that's a bit of a relief. I was starting to wonder if I'd lost my mojo here. Um, but yeah, the aqua regia is definitely reacting with something in there. Something's going into solution. So, just going to let it cook. Um, reaction dies down. I may add some more uh, nitric acid to it if it looks like it needs it. If there's still a lot of stuff on the bottom that looks like it needs to go into solution. Um, but for now, I'm just going to let it cook. Well, there's no doubt we've got a good reaction going on now. The paper pulp's all falling apart from the filters, and we're bubbling, we're fuming. Okay, something's going into solution. This settles down a little bit. We'll do a stance chloride test on it and see what it looks like. As for this stuff over here, since it doesn't really have much in the way of active nitric acid in it, I think I'm just going to put it in my waste bucket and um, let the copper cement out of it. Start all over again. Alright, it's been, I don't know, 25 minutes or so. The reaction has died down a lot. I'm going to put a little bit of more nitric acid in there just to see what happens. I want to make sure everything that wants to go into solution has a chance to. Is this 
this is hot now, so I want to make sure we don't have a boil over. Let me put it in slowly. There's about another two milliliters. Yeah, they've got, got a reaction going there. Hope that's showing up. Alright. Put in a little bit more, but I don't want to get the reaction going too hot and heavy. So I'll just drip it in here. There'll always be a delayed reaction you got to worry about. Okay, well that seems to have revived things quite a bit. Let that sit and cook again. We'll make it orange fumes again. Well, it's it's been about 10 minutes and the reaction has died down. I had a look. Amazingly, most of the stuff that was on the bottom of this beaker, and there was a clear quarter inch of crud on the bottom of this beaker, is in solution. So probably we are dissolving the bulk of it here. I'm going to put a little bit more nitric acid in. And see if we can get, wow, yeah we're getting a reaction. I even turned the heat down on this off camera. That is quite a reaction. That was probably less than a millimeter, milliliter of acid. A lot of that fine stuff may be suspended in the liquid and is reacting with the acid when I drop it in. the dragon's tail. You don't want to put it in too quickly. You have a boil over. Alright, I'm going to let that cook. And I think I'm going to turn the heat down even more. And then uh, once this reaction seems to have died down again, I'll look at it and see if it still looks like there's stuff on the bottom or not. And uh, maybe about time to do a stannous chloride test on this. And uh, see what in the world we've got there, since it looks like most of the stuff is in solution. I would suspect the gold would be one of the last things to go in if there's other base metals in there. So if it's about all in solution, the gold ought to be too. Okay, and let it cook a while. Well, after that last addition of acid, it's been a few minutes by the way, I walked away from this. I come back. Bathtub rings up to here. That must have really foamed up after I walked away from it. Uh huh. Had a bit of a delayed reaction. Okay, I gotta be careful about that. Okay, let me get set up to do a stannous chloride test on this stuff. We'll see if we've got any uh, gold in solution. Okay, let me get a little bit of liquid out of the fume hood here, out of that beaker. Ooh, it's, it's nasty looking. And it's got a lot of stuff suspended in it. And we'll do a little bit of stannous chloride on it. Well, yeah. I'd say there's some gold there. Not a huge, hugely dark indication of gold, but yeah, I'd say there's some gold there. Okay. Good. Uh, it's hard to tell anything else is showing up. The liquid was so grungy, opaque, and green before I put the uh, stannous chloride on it. I really couldn't tell if there's any other precious metal showing up there. I think what I will do is go over there and put carefully, 
a little bit more nitric acid on just to make sure everything is in solution. Just make sure there's no gold lingering on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more nitric acid in here just to make sure everything's in solution. I don't want it to have any gold lingering on the bottom. Okay, that may be a sign that we are about done. Well, no, here it comes. Okay, yep, delayed reaction. Maybe because I turned the heat down. Okay. Just let that sit there. After this dies down, I'll swirl it around and have a look at the bottom. All right, with this stuff, I'm not taking any prisoners. Normally, I rely on the sulfamic acid I use for denoxing my solutions to produce enough sulfuric acid to drop out any lead or other impurities that would drop out as insoluble sulfates. With this stuff, since there's probably well, since it's basically almost all impurities, I'm actually going to add a few milliliters of sulfuric acid to it. Just to be on the safe side. Okay. That should be more than enough, I'm thinking. Especially if I go ahead and use sulfamic acid for, to denox it here in a bit. Alright, cook a bit more. Okay, I think we're done. The last little addition of acid I put in, which I did off camera, I just put a little in to see what would happen. No real reaction, so I think we are done. You turn the heat off. I have here my uh, usual saturated solution of sulfamic acid for denoxing. I put it in slow just in case there's a big excess of acid in here. Well, there is some excess, but not. Okay. In cases where I'm dealing with an opaque liquid and I can't see if all the solids have dissolved really well, I'm okay with having an excess of nitric acid when I'm done dissolving it. That tells me that it's all gone into solution, you know? If there was no excess of nitric acid, I'd have to worry that there would be some undissolved gold in the bottom of this beaker. Speaking of the bottom of the beaker, I did see some solids still down there, but not much. Um, just a few specks of black stuff and some paper pulp. So all it looked like it was down there, so... I think we've got all the good stuff into solution. I'm hoping anyway. Okay, I'm going to call that denoxed. Go get some ice, ice it down, heat is off. All right, let me go get some ice. Okay, got some ice here. Ooh, look how green. But I was expecting that. I thought there was some copper hiding in there somewhere. Okay, so when that melts, we'll filter it. And it'll be ready to uh, drop the gold. All right, well that ice melted pretty quickly. So, let's get this stuff filtered in case any good stuff splashed up on the watch glass. Right, so let's get this stuff filtered. Get some SMB in it. And then the gold can take its time settling overnight. It's getting quite late in the afternoon. I'm going to need to wrap this up shortly.
this is a very interesting color, I have to say. I can't remember the last time I had a liquid that was quite this color of lime green. Interesting. It's coming through nice and clear anyway. I am filtering out whatever is making it cloudy. This may take a while because the filter may clog up. And I don't know if it's showing up on the uh, camera or not, but there's a white layer on the bottom about a quarter inch thick. I assume that's paper pulp from the uh, filters. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Okay, we'll be back when it's done. Okay, I said we'd be back when we're done. I lied. We're only about halfway through the filtration, but I wanted to show you the filter. That has the look of silver chloride to it. So there must have been at least a little bit of silver in those anode slimes. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Alright, let me get back to filtering. Okay, I've got everything through the funnel that will go through the filter. I've uh, been rinsing it. I don't know if the color is showing up on the camera or not, but this is kind of pink. This, uh, this powdery stuff in here. So I think some of the first stuff I noticed going through was probably silver chloride. Not very much, just enough to, for me to say, oh, that looks like silver chloride. Um, there's definitely some paper pulp there, but there's some other stuff here too. I'm not sure what this pink stuff is. Um, and then we got these chunks, which would be the slag I threw in, thinking that they um, might process, but I think they're pretty inert. And there's some little beads of glassy-like stuff, which I assume are slag too, that was probably incorporated in the uh, in the ingots, the anode ingots. Probably, uh, yeah, beads of glassy slag. So very interesting. I might give it one more wash just to make sure I get all of the gold bearing stuff out of it and then we'll be ready to uh, transfer this to a clean beaker and drop the gold. Okay, so it's pretty thoroughly rinsed I think. This beaker has been cleaned. Any goodness that might be stuck on the bottom of the funnel here. Now. Tamp down expectations a bit. I am not expecting a huge amount of gold out of this. Hopefully there will be enough to actually get a weight on. That would be nice. My small scale test, even though I didn't process much material, didn't produce enough gold to actually weigh. Hopefully this time we will. And with any luck at all, I'll be wrong about this prediction. I've been wrong about a few predictions today, so maybe I'll be wrong about this one too. Oh, and I had a close look at some of these bits of slag in here on the filter. And they're all like full of holes like Swiss cheese now. They weren't like that when I put them in. So I guess either the nitric acid treatment or the uh, aqua regia treatment, or one or the other or both, um, chewed something out of them, probably metal, and just left behind Swiss cheesy bits of glass. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, they put this in the fume hood and we'll hit it with some SMB and see what drops out of it. Okay, here we go with the SMB. Wow, that is a dark green color. Obviously there was a lot of copper in there. I don't know why the nitric acid didn't react with it. The only thing I can figure is there must have been something in those slimes more reactive than the copper that used up the nitric acid. Starting to get some foaming. Probably enough. Give it a stir. Uh, it's so 
dark green. I won't know if the color changes. Maybe it'll go opaque. Okay, I guess I'll just let that sit and see what happens. Okay, this stuff's been sitting here all night. Um, it went really murky after a few minutes. And I could tell there was a reaction going on after I put the SMB in, so I just left it sit. Come out this morning, and yeah, it went black. It, it, is, it is really opaque black. So the SMB had a reaction with something that was in that really dirty solution. There is a layer down on the bottom, and it's a little bit of floaty, what looks like gold on top. So I guess we got some gold precipitated. Not sure how much. Really hard to tell since the liquid is so opaque and black. Um, so I got a feeling it's going to be really, really hard to deal with. It's probably going to be um, microfine um, because that's what happens when you try and precipitate the gold out of dirty solutions. Um, so we'll see if I can work with it. Otherwise, I'll probably just redissolve it and re-precipitate it today and uh, see if I can clean it up some. So I guess what I'll do is I will siphon this, siphon the bulk of the liquid off down to the layer of whatever's on the bottom and then we'll see what we got. So I'm going to siphon the liquid into my temporary stock pot bucket here and I just thought I'd give you a quick look at all the gold that's accumulated on the bottom of the temporary stock pot. Um, this has been going on for months here and that's just been accumulating down there a little bit. Every time I put liquid in I'll let it settle. I'll dump it off into my main stock pot. Sooner or later I need to deal with this because hey that's a fair amount of gold down there on the bottom of that. I need to recover that. So let me get set up to siphon. Yeah, there's definitely a layer down there. Looks like a pretty good layer. We'll see. Okay, let me get the hose and siphon it. Okay, so here we go. This stuff. Boy, that is opaque. You can barely see the hose in there. Yeah, this is a pretty dirty solution. Um, those anode slimes contain a little bit of everything, I think. And uh, something in there has reacted with the SMB. Probably the sulfur dioxide in the SMB. I'd be surprised if there's some kind of sulfide salt in there that's causing this color change. I don't know. Anyway, I'll probably fast forward through the rest of this siphoning. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there really is a fair amount of stuff on the bottom. I hope it's all gold. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some other crud mixed in. There's a lot of nasty stuff in these anode slimes. Okay, I'll give you a close-up look at what's left in the bottom of the beaker. Oh, it's turned my uh, the liquid in my temporary stock pot muddy brown and opaque. Can't see all that gold on the bottom anymore. So here it is. Alright, let me start cleaning this up. I'll transfer it to a smaller beaker and give it some distilled water boils. Well, just as I thought, not everything in there is gold. Um, I'm giving it some distilled water boils. This is uh, going to be its second boil. I just put some uh, more distilled water on it, put it back on the heat to boil it. But let me show you the filter, because I, I always drain, when I do my distilled water boils, I always drain the liquid through a filter to catch any fine gold that makes it over. And I keep those filters. But let me show you this filter. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that filter, but that is not gold, because that stuff was staying in the water column, suspended in the convection currents in the hot liquid. Gold is so dense it's not going to do that. Gold's going to sink unless it's the really super micro fine stuff. And this is way too black. I don't know what it is. 
I would imagine some sulfide chemical that formed. Uh, probably something that was making the, uh, the liquid so opaque. So uh, I will keep this filter though. I will, you know, keep, uh, keep washing that, that, that gold with distilled water and boiling it and getting rid of this black stuff, pouring it through this filter. And I'll keep that up until the gold seems clean. And um, I will keep this filter just in case there is a little bit of gold in it and I'll process it in the future. Okay, the gold's had three boils in distilled water, and I've decanted off uh, the water and a lot of that, that lightweight black stuff, whatever it was. So uh, we'll dry it out, and we'll see what kind of weight we got on this stuff. Okay, gold's all dried out. Doesn't look like much after it's dried out. Looked like a lot more when it was wet. Hopefully we can get a weight, though. I think we can get a weight. There's a fine film of gold on the bottom of this beaker, too. That's probably not going to affect the weight much. A little bit up here. Yeah, there's like a bathtub ring of it all the way around. Get it all together. I'm not 100% certain. In fact, I'm pretty certain I did not get all of the... Uh, the lightweight stuff, the lightweight black stuff out of it that was mixed in with the gold. Pretty sure I did not get it all out. Got a lot of it out. But it is much lighter than the gold. I can tell by the way it moves around in the water while the gold settles to the bottom real quick. So, um, might not affect the weight too much. We'll just put an asterisk next to whatever weight I get out of this and say that, you know, it's probably got a little bit of whatever that stuff is left in it. Some sulfide salt, I would imagine. Um, I probably should have reprocessed this stuff, made it clean, but this video is getting really long, so... We will just go with what we've got here, and I will do another video in the future, not too far down the road, of processing dirty gold, okay? So let's see what we've got here. Ooh, that's not very much. Not very much at all. 0.15 grams. There's still some stuck inside the beaker, but probably not enough to really make much difference. Okay. So 0.15 grams out of my, uh, well, now the wind is blowing it around. We'll go with 0.15, okay? So 0.15 grams, even though I'm indoors, it's very windy today. I got the doors open. 0.15 asterisk grams of very dirty gold out of my um, copper cathodes, which weighed what? Okay, I've been doing a little bit of the back of the envelope uh, calculating here. Let's see. Uh, we processed 1.654 kilograms of copper off of those dirty copper anodes and we got 0.15 grams of gold asterisk um, that's about you know if I had a lot more copper that would be about 90 grams per ton that would be a mineable very 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 rich mineable ore if you could find ore that was 90 grams per ton so I'm glad I'm mining my own wastes okay so that's great. That'd be about th close to three, three, three ounces per ton. That's you don't find ore that rich very, very often anymore. So yeah, I'm glad I'm recovering this gold from uh, these anodes. But there wasn't a lot there. If I do put the cell back together, I will probably let it run through several sets of anodes before I try to recover the precious metals from the slimes because that was a fair amount of work for not much gold. But you know, at least I've got an idea of how much uh, is there to be recovered. Um, so that's good. And clearly I was putting, I was letting way too much gold bearing solution get into my waste bucket over a period of years probably. And uh, I need to curtail that. I, you know, I'm gonna put some, put some changes in place to hopefully not get so much gold bearing material into the waste bucket in the future. So once I work through all of the, 
all of the waste copper I have. Hopefully I won't have to bother with this anymore. So, uh, interesting. Well, that was a very interesting experiment. Uh, it's been a long series of videos. Thank you, everyone who stuck with it. Um, I learned a lot. I hope you folks learned something, too. One thing I learned was I was throwing away gold at the rate of about uh, 90 ounces a ton in my, uh, in my waste bucket, which is, you know, unacceptable. So I've put, some, I've put some things in place to prevent that from happening in the future, hopefully. Um, learned a lot about running an electrolytic cell and um, got some good ideas for when I put this thing back together. I think it's going to run it a lot different in the future. Um, definitely. I don't think I'm going to run these second set of anodes I have ready to go here in it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on building a mold of some kind so I can pour some sheets. Get some more surface area out of these things so that um, can run a little higher current and uh, lower voltage in the cell. So that's one idea. Um, anode bags, maybe. I suppose I could run these with anode bags, but uh, I'm thinking about fairly high volume because I've got a lot of copper to go through, um, and I don't know about anode bags. I may just let the slimes accumulate in the bottom um, until I've got a fair amount. In fact, that's going to be one big change with the next one. Now, whoever in the comments said I didn't have enough anode slimes yet to bother with, you were right. You were right, I have to admit, you were right. That 0.15 grams of gold, it was a lot of work for 0.15 grams of gold. So, yeah. So, I think I will run a lot more copper through this before I try to process the anode slimes in the future. Um, and, you know what? There's a lot of people on eBay selling ingots of stuff that's all melted down from computer pins. I may try running some of those too if I can get them really 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 cheap and we'll see if I can get any gold out of those just for funsies we'll see maybe um, I may have enough of my own material to run for quite a while uh, interesting results interesting um, I, I was amazed at how the nitric acid did not interact with all the copper in the anode slimes. I don't know what's going on there. I could see the copper. I could see it floating on the surface. I'd put the nitric acid in. There'd be some bubbling, but it's like something down in the anode slimes was reacting with the nitric acid. And the copper on top, just like, eh, nitric acid, no big deal. So there must have been something more reactive than the copper in the anode slimes that was chewing up the nitric acid. So I'm thinking in the future, at least on a small scale I should test, give it a massive dose of nitric acid and see if I can get rid of all that copper and any other base metal that's in there. Because um, there was a lot of copper left by the time we get to Aqua Regia. It was so green it was practically opaque. So yeah, there was a lot of copper there. And I was thinking that the, it turned black after I put SMB in it. Um, I got to thinking and doing a little research. I'll bet that was copper sulfide that formed. I bet. So uh, it's kind of black in bulk. It forms um, colloidal suspensions that are black. So I'll bet that's copper sulfide because there was a lot of copper in that um, aqua regia for sure. So, yeah. Anyway, it's been interesting. It's been fun. Uh, it's been a learning experience. And I think, uh, yeah, moving forward, going to make a lot of changes in the cell. Going to, like I said, work on sheets for anodes. Um, I've got some good ideas for better electrical connection between the anodes and cathodes and the voltage rails. Uh, work on that. Um, let's see, what else? I may switch to copper sulfate and sulfuric acid electrolyte. I may, I may not. I mean, I've still got the, almost two gallons of copper nitrate solution down there that's not doing anything. Um, although, I could put it into my project to try and recover nitric acid. That's a possibility. So I might, I might switch electrolytes in the future. That's an idea. Um, electrolyte circulation to prevent the stratification. Um, Got some ideas along those lines. Um, there were a lot of suggestions in the videos on how to do that. 
Most of them, I think, would have made the liquid too turbid. But there were a few, a few good suggestions along those lines. I may have to um, look into possibilities. And uh, we put this back together. I may try some of them just to make sure we don't get that stratification problem. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, it was cheap. It really didn't cost me anything. You know, a uh, um, little bit of hardware, a little of this, a little of that. 32 cents worth of electricity. You know, not too bad. Some chemicals. So, it was an interesting experiment. So, I had fun. I hope you guys did, too. Anyway, thanks for watching this far. If you stuck it out through this whole series, hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to see future videos. They're coming out fast and furious. I'm working on two others as I'm filming this today. Um, and, of course, I've always got stuff happening on my second channel, Electric Geek 64 Check that out. Subscribe to it. Um, help that channel grow. And uh, press the little bell icon that YouTube makes you press on both channels to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.